looking for you in the office and they tell me he's the chaplain. What are you doing here? Well, we got to get ready, you know. We've got to switch all the Torah covers from the various colors here, multicolored. We got to get them all to white, so I'm checking to see which one's going to fit on which Sifrei Torah so we can properly match them because that's, that's the theme, Yom Kippur. So why, why white? Mm -hmm. Lots of different reasons, I think. Uh, most people say purity, uh, but I think they think of purity like I'm not clean, now I'm clean. I think when the rabbi is talking about purity, they're really talking about how to cleanse one's heart and cleanse one's mind and leave all the trouble and the mistakes behind and move forward. So I think that's what I mean by purity, but white, I think universally, seems to mean purity in most religious traditions. Yeah, there's another connotation that this reminds us of our tachrichim, mm -hmm. you know, of the, the shroud, no? When mm -hmm. people, traditional Jews, we get buried with a shroud, a white shroud, mm -hmm. to show that there's a limitation to my life. So everything right. we are not allowed to do in Yom Kippur, we don't eat, we don't drink, we don't bathe, we don't put creams, we don't have intimate relationship. We are pretend we are death. Right. You know, Leonard Fine, the late Leonard Fine, he was the founder of Moment Magazine and the founder of Mazon. He was a real tikkun olam, outreach type of uh, teacher in the American Jewish community that helped transform a lot of the community. When he talked about fasting, he said it this way when he launched Mazon. He said, fasting, yes, you have, to, you have to torment your body a little bit so you feel, you know, when you don't feel good and you're hungry, you get a little bit remorseful. But he says, I think there's another reason. When you're fasting, you're imitating dying. And at the end of the day, when you go to break fast, you've looked back and said, I'm mortal. I need food, I need water, and I need it pretty quick. I'm really, it's, life is so delicate. He says, then what I want you to think about is, what happens if when that chauffeur sounded, there's no food for you? Then you're not only feeling bad, you're scared. He says, and think of how many people in the world, there's no chauffeur sounds for them. They don't know where the next meal is coming. And that's how he launched this idea of Mason. So he said, you know what you should do? Calculate what you would have spent for your family on food for Yom Kippur and donate to this thing called Mazon or to your local food bank. We have our kosher food bank here. We have other food banks. Of course, we, Mazon fed everyone. It fed Jews, non-Jews, fed human beings. And that's how he interpreted it. And I've always remembered that since I first met him many years ago. I love it. It just reminds me of what my, my late rabbi, Rabbi Marshall May, used to tell us. Look to, used to look at us Shabbat before Rosh Hashanah and says, you can't come here without the machzor, but don't come here without some food to give mm -hmm. away for other people. Right. So maybe that's right. the first mitzvah we're inviting our partners to perform. Write the check for some charity mm -hmm. for the 10, 12, 14, 15 bucks you are saving, not eating on Yom Kippur. And that turns the fast into something concrete not just affects us, but it turns us to do something good for someone else. You know, years ago, uh, the entertainer known as The Boss, he had a deal. You had to bring two things to his concert. You had to bring a ticket, and you had to bring a can of food. Can of food. And he would then personally, after the concert the next day, after loading truckloads, because he got 40, 50,000 people to his concerts at open stadiums, he would personally go with the truck, and they would deliver the canned goods to the local food banks. And that little type of act of kindness is something that our tradition holds very dear. And so on Yom Kippur, when we're dressing in white, and we're putting white on the Sifrei Torah, and we wear white ties, and we wear white shirts, let that white take on some real meaning, a meaning that says, you were hungry for a day, but we'll all have a wonderful breakfast, bagels, lox, so all the caterers that handle the lox and the bagels, they're ready for us. But think about those people in the world for whom the fast is interminable. It goes on day after day, and they're always desperate for a little bit of help. What shows is that the prophet Isaiah, 2,000 years mm -hmm. ago or more, was so clear, saying, this is the fast I require. Think about those who don't have food during the year. You know, no? I was thinking, what a pity that 50% of the Jews who are abandoning the Jewish community, maybe they do because they only see a white cloth and don't understand what's behind They didn't hear the depth behind it, and that's what we have to communicate. And let's become an ambassador of those messages to your family, your friends, or those Jews who are all over and will not make it Yom Kippur to show. At the break fast, sit around the table and talk to everybody where are we going to send some tzedakah tomorrow to make for sure that those people who are hungry in our community will not be hungry this week. Khatimatov. Khatimatov.